Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Don't Beetlejuice. Don't Carol. Wait. It, it turns out saying it three times isn't all that bad, though, guys. Relax. Okay, here's why. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, a sequel to the 1988 spooky comedy hit movie, brought in $111 million in ticket sales in its domestic opening over last weekend. Our team reported this on Monday. It drew in younger filmmakers, or film goers, I should say, as well as those nostalgic about the original picture. 36 years ago. Amazing. The Warner Brothers Discovery film exceeded the company's expectations. It had forecast 90 million in box office receipts going into the weekend. So uh, delighted to have with us Al Goff. He's Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice screenwriter. He's joining us from Los Angeles. Also with us here in studio is our own uh, Mark Lydorf. He reviewed the movie. Uh, so we just want to kind of have a round table. First of all, Al, thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for joining us. 1988, I had to think back kind of where I was. Uh, the first Beetlejuice movie, 36 years. Why did it take so long or why are we now getting a sequel after 36 years? Well, I, I can't answer why it took so long, but um, about three years ago, um, Tim approached us on the set of season one of Wednesday. Tim Burton. And, Tim Burton. Okay, thank you. And, and Sorry. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and asked us um, to write the sequel. He had been he had been thinking about it for a long time. He'd been having conversations with Michael Keaton and Winona Ryder, and he said it's the movie that he's asked most about, and people have been begging for a sequel for years. And he, I think he was ready to, to do it. We met with him. We kind of went through all of his ideas, what he wanted in the movie, and we went off and wrote an outline and pitched it to him. He really liked it. We wrote the script. I mean, Miles Miller, my my writing partner, and I have been partners for 30 years, and this is probably the the smoothest and fastest movie we've ever had from, from you know, from, would, you, would you guys write the script to three years later, here we are, the, the movie's out in theaters. So, you know, it's, it's been a, an incredible, thrilling experience for us. No, you and Miles, this is Mark Leidorf, uh, who I had the pleasure of seeing the movie in Mexico City. I wanted to see this movie so bad. Oh. I asked them if I could review it on vacation. <laughs> and um, I'll tell you, the kids in this industry screening were all in their 20s. And I know you're, you and I are about the same age, I think. But uh, So I thought, assumed you'd be writing it for, for my generation, kids who loved it in the 80s. And the, the folks in Mexico just ate it up and they were all a lot younger than me. So congratulations. <laughs> uh, you, Thank you. You, you and, uh, and Mr. Miller are no strangers to success. Of course, you also uh, created Wednesday, which I think I read is the most viewed Netflix series in English. Is that correct? It's the, that is correct. That's kind of incredible. It, 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 by the way, it is incredible. We, we can't believe it ourselves. So. But that also was a Tim Burton project. And, and my first question for you would be, what, what is it like writing for an auteur like mm. that? Someone with such a specific aesthetic and kind of quirky sensibility. Is it harder or is it easier? Well, the two things. What's interesting is we had written the, the first episode, the pilot episode of Wednesday, and we sent it to Tim. And because he was our first choice to direct it. Which, by the way, is like is like shooting a, a satellite into space and hoping you know you you get an answer, right? <laughs> so, um, and because you know he'd never done TV, we didn't know. But uh, you know, uh, you know, my first jobs were all in sales, and if you don't ask, the answer is no. So we sent it to Tim, and literally four days later, we got a a text from his agent saying Tim read the script, he loved it, he wants to to FaceTime with you guys, and so it, again, it's one of those like dream scenarios for us. And we FaceTime with Tim. He said he, he loved the script. He, he'd always, he'd circled the Adams family, you know, several times in his career, um, but never had found a way in. And, and he, he, he loved it. He, Wednesday was his favorite character in the Adams family. He said he would have dated her in high school. And, um, <laughs> and, and then, yeah, which, by the way, felt very on brand. I was going to say, and, it's not surprising um, to hear that. <laughs> it doesn't surprise and, me. <laughs> And so that's that's really how it how it started. But I, I think w when you when you look at Tim's movies, what's in, what's really incredible is the majority of them are family dramas with his unique perspective on the world, which is so incredibly unique and specific. 
but somehow it is incredibly universal. And that is something I think he is singular in a, as a filmmaker in that respect. So, so I think, I think for us, it was, you know, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice to us is really the most joyful movie you'll see this year about death and grief. Well, can I just say from someone, you guys all know, my, our audience knows I'm from a large family, one of seven kids. I mean, every family yeah. has its love, its quirkiness, its stresses. You know, Tim, you're from, you know, you've got a bunch of siblings yeah, too. Yeah, three and siblings, like we all, know, all over. Like we can relate yeah, to this, right? <laughs> yeah. We can relate to this. Um, I'm uh, curious about what Tim Burton's role is as you guys are the screenwriters. Wh- where does he get involved and where do you kind of where do, where do you where are you involved? And now we have about a minute, and then we'll come back and do some more conversation. Sure. Well, the the the, the quick answer with this one because it's so personal. He he gave us his ideas. We came back. We broke the story. We wrote the script, and then we spent a year, you know, going through drafts. And I think what Tim does is there, it's like a tuning fork. He could read something. There might be a section of a of a script where he's like, something isn't feeling right here. You know, I think let's focus on this area. He'd have some ideas. So it, it was incredibly collaborative that way with him. So and I think because we'd gone through and done Wednesday with him, we could we could speak Burton a little more fluently. <laughs> so it, it helped a lot. Burtonese coming to a Burtonese, language learning exactly. app near you. Hey, Al. So Mike, um, Michael Keaton. I'm just curious what yes. that phone call was like. Was he in from the get go? Did he say, yep, sure. Yes. No. What? Like what happened? We know it's it's Tim was talking to Michael. So when we wrote the script, it, we were like, we really have an audience of two. It's Tim and Michael. Mm-hmm. So I think once we had the script and we'd gone through a couple rounds with Tim and he he had a draft he felt really good about, he sent it to Michael. And so you guys wrote you know, it before Mike, even Michael was on board. Yes. Yes. Tim, like I said, Tim had been having conversations yeah. with him, but he hadn't read the script and he could have said no. And, you know, he he was you know, very complimentary of, of, of the script and, you know, really liked it. And, you know, we got a lovely email from him. So we were like, it, you know, there's three emotions in show business, depression, surprise, and relief. And we were relieved. <laughs> so, yeah, we were, we were relieved. Well, well, speaking of Michael Keaton, I, I wondered watching the film, you know, he seems to be improvising a lot. I suspect he's not. And I just wonder if there is room with an actor like that, a character like that, if there is room for improvisation and how you write around that. I, the answer is there, there is room for improvisation. We wrote it in, because the character he created with Tim in the first movie, which, by the way, we went back and read the Beetlejuice shooting script. And that character, in, in terms of there's a Beetlejuice in it, obviously, but that voice was really something that Michael and Tim mm. and, you know, created on set, the whole look and the thing. So the good news is it was, he's such a classic specific character is we were able to write to that voice. And we always treated Beetlejuice as an agent of chaos, which right. is what he is in the movie. So if, and, and the thing that, that we were all cognizant of, Michael probably the most was you don't want him in too much of the movie. A little Beetlejuice can go a long way. Mm. You don't want it to, you know, so, it, and I think because of that, when he's on screen, he's that much more impactful. Right. Well, so, he, he's so not actually, yeah. he's not actually the main character of the film, he's of not. either film. He's sort of a, a the hardest working supporting character, I mm-hmm. would say. Um, yeah. I, I'm wondering if there are specific jokes, not to spoil anything too much, but are there specific visual gags or jokes that you wish could have made it to the final edit? You know, like things that, things that you wrote into the script that sadly got lost goofy goofy stuff i you know it's funny i i'm i'm sure there are and i can't remember any at the moment (laughs) well there's a lot there's a lot (laughs) yeah i mean you know and i and and what and what you know it we're we're really sort of thrilled with how the movie you know how the movie turned out and and um you know we we haven't you know destroyed people's childhood memories. That, that was always the big fear. <laughs> That's a good thing. Hey, what I wonder, because how much of this must have felt like this grand reunion, right, of bringing back so many people who had obviously worked on the original, like what, what it was like on the set? Well, we, we weren't on the set because unfortunately it was during the writer's strike, so we couldn't oh. go. So, which, which, by the way, sucked. That's a bummer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. That's... That sucks. Wow. Um, but um, I think it was, you know, certainly 
for for Michael and Winona and Catherine and Tim, I think it was it was like a family reunion. And mm. you know, having having spoken to all of them, obviously after you know the shooting and during this whole process leading up to it, I mean, they they you know could not be nicer, could not be more thrilled. Their genuine genuine love and affection for each other is is really you know evident. And I think for Tim, from what all accounts we heard is. He, he loved just being on set and making the movie. So, and, I, and again, I think the directors, especially with Tim, but in the, that, that sort of director's DNA and his, his love of the, what he's doing is, is, and his passion for it, I think it gets on the film somehow. Not that there's film anymore, but you know what I mean. Speaking of Winona Ryder, my big question about the movie is Lydia Dietz. And the few knocks I've heard on the movie is from people who, you know, like me, love the original and thought, oh, no, she's a disaster. She's not that confident, stylish, fabulous, fearless kid that she was. And me personally, I loved that. She's a basket case. I'm not ruining anything too much. She's a basket (laughs) case. She starts the movie popping pills. Her life is a mess. Um, I'd like you to right. speak about that. Why was it important for you to have Lydia be uh, so hobbled? Well, we, you know, part of it is we looked at her. It's like, and, and you're right. Like she, she's this, and it's the Winona we all remember from our, from our youth. Yeah. And, but, but I think it's, it's, you know, it's 36 years. And we're like, how would a person who sees ghosts every day, how would they be 36 <laughs> years on? Like that's yeah. got to drive you crazy. And it makes you, so when we meet her, you know, she isn't in a great place. She's obviously, you know, monetizing her, her ability. She's in a she's in a terrible codependent relationship, which everyone around her can see. Mm. And, you know, she's kind of lost that spark, right. you know, that that we saw. And then I and then she has this not great relationship with her daughter. And then I think through the course of the movie, you start to see her regain that confidence and find herself again. Right. So I, I think I think for us, it was like, yeah. yeah, let's like light hasn't been great. It's it's been hard for her, and Al, I and I think for us it was just interesting. Al, yeah. real quick, ten seconds. Is there going to be a Beetlejuice three? Be Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, hey. Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> you you can't say his name three times. So you know what happens. <laughs> uh, that that is all in the hands of Tim Burton. So I, I have okay. no. I, <laughs> I can't speak to that. Well, let's hope. <laughs> Listen, this was so much fun. Congratulations, uh, and have a great weekend. So appreciate it. Al Goff, screenwriter of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and of course our own Mark Lidorf, Bloomberg Businessweek film reviewer. So appreciate it. Thank you so much, 